Hello. So Hunter K on Snapchat asks, he's having trouble drawing faces, so he's wondering how to draw faces out of sort of thin air, you know. And he asks, is it easier to start with uh, a facial feature like an eye or a nose or a mouth? Because some people do that. Some artists like to kind of start w with one place and then grow out of it um, by adding shapes. And then he's asking if that's easier than to draw on top of a, a sketch or a frame or like kind of like a, a wireframe situation. Uh, so what I'm going to do is show kind of how to approach it both ways and why each way uh, could be either easier, well not easier, maybe just it will have different results. So let's get into it. Okay, so for the first approach I'm going to draw a an outline or a, kind of an underlay sketch. Uh, let's make a new layer. So as you can see, it's not a perfect face, but it's just an underlying construction. And then you can see, uh, using a, f a frame or an, uh, an underlay, uh, I established uh, a line here for the, for the eyes to line up on, and then a line here for the symmetry. So if I was to draw something here, I can uh, kind of eyeball where it would be in perspective going to the other side. Um, same thing with the mouth and the nose. And if you've seen my other tutorials about like what, it, what the placement is for those things, uh, you'll find that they line up in a very specific way. Um, so that's the advantage so far for uh, drawing using an, uh, an underlay. Um, because you sort of map things out, you, you have it kind of established. You, you, you don't have to worry about coming up with things on the spot. Um, and let's just take this a bit further and then we'll move on to the next part. In honor of the month of May being Anna May, Anna May, I'm sort of doing this in a slightly anime style. Um, sort of keeping up on my promise. I know I've made a lot of, by the way, apologies, I've made a lot of promises and I didn't really fulfill them yet. Like, <laughs> I forget, I forget things a lot. So, um, I think there was like an orc tutorial that I still have to put up. Um, if there's anything else that I forgot, just remind me in the comments so I can kind of uh, put them on the backlog and as a reminder. Um, something about anime eyes. Uh, when I was uh, putting together some research for that, I was like, what kind of anime do I like? Because there's, you know, there's this new wave of anime which has like, a, uh, this, this, you know, a whole range of styles. But if you look back at, you know, I guess from Pokemon to Sailor Moon, all the way to like Miyazaki, Ghibli Studio stuff, uh, it has a kind of classic feel to it. And I guess I'm drawn more to that, but I'll, at the same time, uh, there's a fascination with semi-realism that has a, a foundation in anime, so like the anime proportions of faces, sort of like what I'm doing now, um, kind of, obviously this is not realistic, nobody has an eye that large, uh, but when you render it, it could, you know, have that realistic look, so it has that really appealing style that's really popular but it'll it'll go out of style soon that's just the way it is but uh, while it is in style while it is still something impressive it might be something that I'll try I mean not not to say that it's about um, uh, the audience and, or you know caring too much about you know just do whatever you like do whatever is fun all right so here we go with this So that's the first approach. Uh, the second approach would be trying to draw a face by starting with an eye. And like we said, the, advantage of the, the advantages of this was to kind of um, have a foundation for uh, symmetry, the overall shape, you know, this would be the symmetry, the whole shape. You can kind of know what your bounds are in terms of uh, what you're going to be drawing within. And so there's, a, there's sort of this uh, less of a burden of figuring out where things will go. So. Starting with a plan, you can end up with something like that. Um, 
and this next one I'll be trying to draw without uh, a, uh, a sketch or an underlay uh, by starting with the specific part and then letting it grow. And by grow I mean uh, adding the next part, like you know you start with an eye, you wouldn't go from the eye and then start the fingernail, right? Um, you would sort of connect them by uh, letting the shapes happen. All right, this next approach would be using, uh, or, or not using a, uh, what's it called? Blah, 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 blah. All right, so you could start with the nose, right? But, or the mouth or the eye, but usually people uh, doing this approach would start with the eye. So let's just do that and see how it goes. Um, so with this, it's like, it could be anything. The, the the rest of it, we don't know. There's no plan. Uh, and that's sort of like uh, this organic process here um, sort of lends to the idea of uh, kind of allowing the creativity to happen uh, without a plan. Um, and because of that, you might yield something unexpected um, versus the other approach where you're trying to fit exactly the 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 frame or the underdrawing uh, based on the, the anatomy or or um, or any kind of guidelines that you might have learned uh, so it's kind of constrained if you go the other way but this way allows to like kind of uh, explore and maybe come up with different shapes like uh, although I do have in mind those same uh, similar proportions you know like I know that the the, the, the nose isn't going to be down here right I mean, we could, it would just look weird. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, with the mustache and uh Oh God. Twilight and Mr. Thornberry from Wild Thornberries. Um, okay, I have to keep going with this just for a minute. See, that's the type of creativity that you might stumble upon, as ridiculous as it might be. Um, Okay, I'm gonna erase that. <laughs> anyway, but but I know that uh, the nose that I want isn't down that far. It's you know it's somewhere around uh, this area. You know I could even like put a scribble here, um, and one might be like, dude, why are you scribbling, man? That's not cool. Um, but dude, that's that's kind of like a a cool uh, underlay of what could be a nose. And then if I use white, you know. I could just kind of paint on the top side of the nose and look now we have like a sketchy uh, nose situation going there but I'm going to just go ahead and not do that right now um, let's go back to dark so yeah that, that's the kind of um, advantage uh, uh, and, and freedom that you have when you're just like starting from one spot and letting things grow up, but it's you, it's not easy to do unless you already know the the parts of the face. So, um, because uh, like I said, you you kind of know that there's these kind of distances between each part, and if you didn't practice that over doing this kind of stuff, then you're not going to um, you're going to have a hard time trying to nail things down. Uh, this method and and there's like thousands of methods of drawing there's no one set way these are just two different approaches um, based on a question that I got and uh, I figured I could just answer it better by showing instead of responding via snapchat text so in a way this is almost as if I'm drawing an underlay uh, or a, a plan for, for like another pass but the difference is I'm not doing the whole like measuring lines and lining things up and making sure because then it starts to get rigid um, and almost formulaic not that it's a bad thing but uh, like if I'm sketching my sketchbook I'm definitely going this approach because I don't really care to uh, go along perfect well, not perfect, but like planned uh, lines or, or kind of designs. Let's uh, rotate this. And so if I'm drawing uh, the rest of the head, this is 
this might be troubling for other people because it's like where does the head end like is it is it like a big circle right is, is the head really that big um and where does the ear go does it go up here no it doesn't <laughs> um but since i've drawn enough skulls in my time you know come on so if here's uh eye socket, eye socket, nose, cheekbone, cheekbone, the barrel of the mouth with the teeth and you got the jaw. This is a very crude, inaccurate skull, but I can sort of guess where the back of the skull is going to go. Because um, I know that there's a zygomatic arch that comes here. Below. But anyway, uh, so it creates this, this groove here and that groove sort of like starts to indicate where the, the, the back of the skull stops. And you have these like sutures and lines and whatnot. But um, so that's actually another recommendation I can give if you want to draw heads uh, from uh, thin air or uh, out of imagination is to understand the skulls. Because if you know the skull, you also know where the neck goes. Um, we often have the mistake of drawing the neck, you know, like that coming down out of the jaw. But really, um, if you look at the side view of a skull, um, it's a very crude skull. Here's the cranium, here's the mouth, or the teeth or whatever. Uh, the, the spine kind of comes out like this, or, you know, the neck bones. So it sort of rests on a hinge, like about right there. Um, so in perspective on this thing, it's, it's like almost, if we, if we draw an ellipse as a cylinder, kind of comes up like that and it starts to act as where the nose might go and if you know anatomy a little bit further you know that the the neck muscles the sternocleidomastoid uh, as it connects to the sternum and we're getting really complicated here uh, goes from behind the ear and all the way down to that and then you start to have a body anyway that's a crude anatomy 101thanks for watching and gl um, bleh, glad you watched uh, also Hunter thanks for asking the question about faces uh, so that we could uh, share this with people and uh, uh, in other news I did start a Patreon um, it's nothing uh, solid right now uh, right now it's just um, if, if anybody wants to support the channel but soon I will have it set up so that we will be giving out uh, you know things along the way you know it's probably gonna be PSDs um, extra insights and tutorials and stuff um, but I will always be doing YouTube stuff so don't worry I'm not gonna disappear um, at least that's the plan for now and uh, if you'd like to help me out there you know the link is in the description um, and uh, also the sketch fit thing will be announced very soon who the winners are for the uh, challenge. Um, it's really fun. A lot of people to be uh, uh, judging. There's a lot of entrants. Um, so let's see how that goes. Anyway, uh, you all have a great day. I'm just going to put a couple more highlights on this and then uh, bada bing, bada boom. I'm not going to make any promises about coming back to color this later because I will probably forget. Um, there's too many highlights. Anyway, okay, so um, yeah, thanks for tuning in, and I will see you all very soon. Uh, clickety click.